welcome to the course RF transceiver design. Myself Darshak Bhatt from IIT Roorkee. So this course will uh, deal about RF transceiver design. So we will have a, a detailed uh, understanding and uh, we will go through all the aspect of RF transceiver design. So this module is a basic of wireless communication. So let us start. So first of all, when we will talk about RF transceiver de design or any course. So why this course? Uh, this question will come in all our mind. So this course has a lots of impact on electronics industry. So we are right now using a 5G. Now 5G has a many application and 5G is going to cover uh, all the mobile communication and it is going to include many other communication into the electronics industries. So this course has a direct relation with uh, how uh, we use a 5G and 5G has a backbone is a wireless communication. So the moment we think about the fifth generation, sixth generation and the past generation, wireless has a uh, important role to play. Another application in the current scenario, in future all vehicle are going to replace with a vehicular radar because we are going towards a autonomous vehicle and that autonomous vehicle will help us to consider designing a vehicular radar. So in future all the vehicles is going to replace with vehicular radar and there is a lots of demand in electronics industry. The third one word is a IoT, Internet of Things. Right now we have many things around us and we are trying to connect it with the internet. And the moment we try to connect it to internet, we have a lots of demand of wireless communication and RF transceiver design. So IoT is also playing a significant role in the future direction of electronics industry. The one other impact that is happening that is satellite communication, which we cannot avoid because satellite communication is helping us to, uh, in many, uh, many cases satellite communication will help us for finding out the uh, various scenario over the earth, uh, what are the calamities can happen. So that all can help in the satellite communication. And in future also, if we will go for uh, space communication, satellite communication will play an important role. Then final is the defense that we cannot avoid and defense has also many application of RF transceiver design. So this is uh, the course which will help you to design a RF front end and basic understanding of that components and in future you can build a much more complex circuit not only for uh, one application, for multiple application. So if we see the market overview, so for the year, the, this graph has shown only 2022 year and it is showing for power semiconductor market only. So it has around 31.3 uh, million US dollar that economy it is. So this RF power semiconductor industry has also big impact and uh, this course is also going to deal with some of the power devices and how can we design a power amplifier receiver design. So this uh, we can see from this graph that in 2022 or in next 10 years how the market will grow. There is a another uh, pie chart which is uh, from the review that uh, what are the various application and various consumer markets that govern the uh, global radio frequency component market. So but, but obvious it is a consumer electronics is dominating. Then the second dominating factor is automotive and military and wireless communication. So uh, it is a most is consumer electronics and consumer electronics is uh, going to require many uh, RF transceivers uh, which will help 
help us to design this course will help us to design a rf transceiver designed for consumer electronics it can be also applied to automotive military and wireless communication when we talk about rf design it has a multiple sub disciplines let's say various disciplines are necessary for rf design because rf design is a interdisciplinary course and the moment we think about rf design there is a microwave theory we need to have understanding of microwave theory then communication theory uh, random signals uh, various transceiver architectures that we are going to study in this lecture uh, in ic design then there are various cat tools you need to learn we will try to go through some of the cat tools but cat tools will make your life easy to do the rf design you need to have understanding of wireless standards what are the multiple access techniques how the signal is propagating over the air or in any medium so this all sub area will merge into the rf design so you need to have a basic understanding of all this sub area and then you can be a master of rf design so this course will help you to uh, go through the basic and how you can be a good rf designer so uh, before starting the course this is a basic course we need to see the application and what are the electromagnetic wave spectrum will help us to understand the application and how we can use it for future purpose so there are various microwave uh, frequency let's say medium frequency high frequency very high frequency ultra high frequency super super high frequency extremely high frequency so this frequency range are micro range and we are using it for mobile communication various communication we are using then there is a one uh, area which is here noted down that is a terahertz which is which is a not explored that much so now researchers are trying to explore the terahertz domain as well there is a photonics is explored and we are using optical fiber Uh, for uh, many communication high speed communication so in future that we we might use a uh, more terahertz uh, for multiple application and there are various application also associated with the each frequency band x ray and gamma ray we are using for uh, medical imaging and astrophysics so we, this uh, frequency band are also designated Uh, as a name suggest so there are a low frequency so low frequency band that is a 30 to 300 kilo kilohertz it is mostly used in navigation and time standards then medium frequency mf which is a 300 kilohertz to 3 megahertz which is used in marine and aircraft navigation or am broadcasting still we are using because underwater communication there is a uh, too much attenuation at high frequency so in marine air aircraft navigation the low frequencies medium frequency as and high frequency can be used 3 to 30 megahertz uh, it is again used for am broadcasting amateur radio short wave broadcasting then there is a very high frequency 30 to 300 megahertz mostly our fm tv broadcast or land mobile is used in this frequency range uh, after that ultra high frequency range 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz it is used in cellular phones we all are using a cellular phone which is uh, 4g is using uh, less than 3 gigahertz but in future 5g or 6g as mentioned here can go beyond 3 gigahertz so that communication mostly happen in either sub 6 gigahertz or sub 10 gigahertz so this is a future uh, uh, futuristic uh, uh, technology 6g or uh, beyond we will use the either sub 10 or sub 6 gigahertz in 5g we are using 3 to 30 gigahertz range in extremely high frequency there is a 30 to 300 megahertz here backhaul is where we make our own network it is used for uh, defense application and uh, there is a radar and satellite exp 
satellite communication also this frequency are used. Again, there is a terahertz which is under the study and it is for R&D and experimental. In future, there are multiple application is going to come for these frequencies. This band you can also designate with the letter and it, these are a popular letters which are used in various wireless communication. So, L stands for uh, 1 to 2 gigahertz L band. Uh, it is used in navigation GPS. So, various still GPS standards are using the 1 to 2 gigahertz or all the cellular phones are using. Uh, then S band, we all are using Wi-Fi and Bluetooth ISM band. It is also used for satellite communication as well. There is a C band 4 to 8 gigahertz. It is used for satellite or micro relays, Wi-Fi and uh, DSRC. So, uh, C band has uh, mostly uh, related to satellite communication. Then X band has a radar is dominating here. So, mostly for radar application X band is used. There is a Q, K and K A band. So, it is used in satellite radar than uh, 5G cellular. So, now new band 26.45 to 40 gigahertz. So, this will also become used in the 5G cellular. In future, this Q band can also be targeted for short distance communication. U band is under experimental in and it is used in radar. In future, the uh, current Wi-Fi is going to replace with the Y gig and that will be around uh, V band V that is a 50 to 75 gigahertz it it is it is written as 802.11 AD standard. So, the Wi-Fi high speed Wi-Fi will be replaced with this uh, Y gig communication for short distance communication. Uh, e band is used for useful for microwave backhaul and W band is uh, for automotive radar. So, all the automotive radar is going to be designed in this band and other bands are experimental in future we might see the 6C will uh, use this uh, frequency band. So, if we, if we compare the various uh, generation 4th four, four generation, 5th generation or, or 6th generation, wh what are the different uh, uh, parameters that we see? and uh, what what is the targeted specification that we are targeting for the uh, future generation. So, the current 4G and 5G standard. So, the peak data rate we are targeting 1 Gbps for 4G, 10 Gbps for 5G and 1 Tbps for uh, 6G. Uh, latency as we go on increasing the standard uh, generation, we try to reduce the latency as le less as possible. So, that the we can uh, let us say for vehicular radar, it can take a decision as quick as possible and even the information that is provided us can be fast. Then uh, maximum spectral efficiency, also we are targeting the high efficiency uh, as we progress over the generation. Uh, mobility support. So, right now currently 4G has a 350 kilometer per hour, 5G has a 500 kilometer per hour and in future for 6G we are going to target a 1000 kilometer per hour. So, this is what we target in the future for mobility support. Satellite integration up to uh, 4G and 5G we have not done any satellite integration, but the future 6G technology will be fully integrated with the satellite communication. Then artificial intelligence uh, as uh, we uh, as I told in the first slide that we are going to use the IoT internet of things and when the moment we connect the things and we have multiple uh, base station this thing should also take a decision by itself and the, for taking a decision it should also uh, use a machine learning and artificial intelligence techniques so that the various decision can be taken by the uh, things itself IOT in the IoT. So, uh, the AI integration is not there in the 4G, but in 5G and 6G, 
the AI integration will be there. Autonomous vehicle uh, integration in 5G it is a partial, but in 6G it will be fully uh, integrated. And for uh, XR, where uh, for XR communication, what we will do currently 5G is it is used for virtual reality. So, in 5G it is a partially added, but in 6G it will be fully. And in future, uh, haptic communication, uh, which are mostly relate with the touching feeling, uh, is going to happen in a 6G communication. So, that is why 6G is sometimes also called as a ubiquitous communication, which is, which is going to integrate all the features uh, that we are targeting in future. Now, uh, this slide has a, uh, shown the oscillation frequency in FT versus a year. So, it has a many information is there. So, there is a at this uh, point there is a various technology node. So, in the if we are using a RF CMOS process or by CMOS process in each technology there is a technology node which will tell us the what is the length of the uh, transistor. Now, if we try to reduce the length, uh, as we can see that Ft and Fmax is increasing. Now, you might wonder what is Ft? Ft is nothing but a transition frequency and at that point your uh, current gain means small signal current gain is equal to 1. So, you do not see any gain at all. So, that is a uh, at that point it is a cutoff frequency you cannot use a transistor as a transistor it is just a passive device. So, now there are transistors which are available which can go which Ft is beyond the 500 gigahertz. So, if you see the 40 nanometer it is around 500 gigahertz and if you see the current Qualcomm uh, Snapdragon this is uh, data up to 2010 it is using a 10 nanometer and less than that process and Intel also using a 10 nanometer and in future they are targeting the uh, lower node as well. So, their Ft is increasing over the time and that will help us to realize the application as I told which is a terahertz application also in future for wireless communication. So, this is a uh, important slide. Now, our device can work up to that frequency. I just want to give an example that one of the chief which is developed by uh, Fraunhofer and uh, it is a FMCW radar on chip which is working at 240 gigahertz. Now, in this uh, there is a uh, transmitter on chip, uh, there is a uh, transmitter antenna on chip, receiver antenna, receiver antenna on chip and various module like PLL then uh, doubler, oscillator, mixer. So, all these components are there on chip and you can uh, see that if a device capability is there, we can have a sufficient FT, then we can realize the any chip which is working at a very high frequency. And there is an the advantage of going at high frequency, we can integrate even antenna on chip. So, uh, this is one example that futuristic technology. Now, uh, currently we are not uh, able to do the communication means for a very high frequency. There are limitations that is added by the packaging and interconnects. So, interconnects is adding the uh, loss at very high frequency. So, if we try to avoid the interconnects. Uh, at high frequency, we can do the wireless communication with very high speed. So, that is why uh, in future all the chips which are targeting very high frequency are come up with the on chip antenna all the configuration which uh, or interconnects which reduces the loss. So, uh, it is also uh, help us to find out the ways how we interconnect the chips in future there are many better interconnects will come and we, we can do the much better integration at high speed. So, there is a possibility that we just put a one small device near to the other device and the te terabit 
data can be transferred within a fraction of second. So, that is a futuristic technology and we can replace the interconnect with the wireless interconnects. Now, the atmosphere has a big impact on what frequency that we target. So, here the there are a, uh, this graph has a wavelength and frequency in x axis and attenuation which is a dB per kilometer in y axis. So, as we can see that there is a, at less than 10 gigahertz of frequency there is very less attenuation per kilometer. So, what it says that whenever we want to go for long distance communication it is better to use a less than 10 gigahertz. So, this frequency which is a less than 10 gigahertz will always dominant for a mobile or wireless communication and uh, this uh, band is uh, being a part of any 4G, 5G, 6G and future technologies as well. Then the next which as we go on increasing the frequency there are a uh, high attenuation. So, for uh, short distance or communication we, we will use this kind of high frequency and we can increase the data rate. So, when we decide the frequency range this uh, graph will help us that what are the tubs, what are the uh, place at which there is a uh, frequency, uh, at what frequency there is a law loss which we can target in future. So, this frequency band which is a beyond 22 gigahertz has a tub kind of effect. So, we can have a uh, low loss compared to 22 gigahertz. So, in 5G millimeter wave band we are targeting the more than 22 gigahertz of frequency. A as we go on increasing the frequency and at 60 gigahertz there is a uh, oxygen molecules will interact and there is a very high attenuation. So, instead of 60 gigahertz uh, people are using 77 gigahertz for communicating in the radar vehicular radar. So, this this tub 77 gigahertz to around 110 gigahertz will be the future future technology for the uh, vehicular communication. So, this will help us to reduce the uh, to decide the application for different frequency for different application. Then there is a another band which is going to come that is a that will be around 140 gigahertz and uh, that will be part of the 6G or beyond. I think next uh, because 183 gigahertz there is a peak and the due to H2O molecules in air will have high, high attenuation in, because of this interaction we will going to use a other frequency band which is around 210 or 220 gigahertz. So, uh, this graph will help us to understand that what, what frequency range we will target in future and what are the application, what is the attenuation dB per kilometer is happening for different frequency or wavelength. So, uh, then there is a another part that is a rain attenuation. So, where, when there is a rain we, we all has observed that uh, in DTH when there is a rain or a cloudy season we might not get a enough signal. So, we, co we could not see the television properly. So, that is happening because of the clouds and rain and as uh, clouds and rain is more there is a high attenuation and that uh, you can see that as frequency is increasing again the attenuation is increasing and as the rain uh, the amount of rain rate if it is 150 mm per hour 100 so that will increase the attenuation. So, attenuation increase with frequency so at millimeter wave and high it is a more attenuation and uh, it is a problem for long distance communication for satellite links. Uh, so, above the clouds if you want to connect to satellite it is a possible, but below uh, it is difficult to uh, communicate because of this high attenuation. So, when we uh, target any application this also ne needs to be in 
or mind that what are the attenuation, rain attenuation affecting the wireless communication. So, uh, this graph has uh, many information and uh, in this uh, what are the pros and cons if we are using a millimeter wave or high frequency uh, band for uh, communication. So, we all know that there are limitations. Now, the moment we know the limitation as necessity is mother of invention. So, we will try to improve the limitation that we have. So, what are the limitation that uh, tenor characteristics there is a high attenuation, high path loss, there is a multi path sparse, there is a frequency selective channel that we required, there is a limited mobility, there is a system outage. So, these are the limitation to go for high frequency communication. The current capability of chips is not better at this frequency. So, chip designer will target to work hard and make a good chips for this frequency. The power consumption is also high uh, and we need to have a better transceiver architecture for this kind of application and there are uh, some hardware limitation as I told uh, packaging or interconnects will reduce the speed. So, there is an improvement on other side is possible. So, if we try to do the improvement there are various techniques which is uh, provided on this side. Uh, that around this can be used and we can improve all this thing. We can use the beam forming, we can use the massive MIMO, uh, we can divide the small cells, uh, OFDM or multi user uh, structures. Uh, there is a different kind of uh, uh, multiple access techniques, space multiple access techniques, uh, then cooperative MIMO. Uh, various kind of channel coding can be adopted. So, this all uh, techniques will help us to improve and get the high or huge available bandwidth. We can get advantage of the very high bandwidth. Then uh, order of magnitude of capacity increase, very high data rate we can achieve. There is a low latency also we can achieve. All the performance that we want can be achieved if we adopt all this technology. So, this graph if uh, any researcher is going through this uh, lecture can target uh, uh, these uh, techniques in future and uh, make the, the chip or your wireless system to work at millimeter wave or even at higher frequency. So, here there is a uh, in 1865 Maxwell has a, uh, given a Maxwell equation which uh, tells us the how wave will propagate, EM wave will propagate in various mediums and up, he has demonstrated in 1865. Now, Hertz has taken around uh, 10 years of time to demonstrate its generation of EM waves. On right side, you will see one picture, uh, you can guess uh, who is he. So, uh, I will just give the name. He is a Acharya Jagdish Chandra Bose. Now, why I kept his uh, photo here? Because in 1895, Bose has demonstrated the millimeter wave transmission. So, after 1895, uh, it took around 6 years for Marconi to demonstrate the wireless communication. We might see multiple books Marconi, but before Marconi, Bose has already demonstrated the wireless communication. So, uh, Acharya J.C. Bose, what was his first experiment? So, uh, he demonstrated the world first millimeter wave wireless communication system that we are going to use in the current century. So, millimeter wave he has developed in 1895 and we are going to uh, see that we are going to have a multiple application and going to use in the uh, current century. So, there is a, a transmission and reception of around 2.5 centimeter or 12 gigahertz to 5 mm 60 gigahertz wavelength over the 23 meter distance he has demonstrated. So, this was is a demonstration uh, during uh, this is a, a model this is uh, available at the Jagdish Chandra Bose Museum in Bose Institute, Kolkata. This is a model of first world first millimeter wave system. 
and uh, in his experimental setup there is a radiator there is a spectro spectrometer circle there is a plane mirror there is a cylindrical mirror and totally reflecting prism uh, there is a semi cylindrical uh, that is are used there are the crystal holders collecting panel and various component he has used for demonstrating that experiment and while doing this experiment he has uh, developed everything on the lab and even he has used a bunch of uh, bunch of cables a uh, bunch of papers and that papers he has used as a polarizer uh, and some threads uh, structure are used as a polarizer and radiator also he is made uh, in uh, in the lab so how we can take his legacy and we make a future research in the uh, upcoming technology so he has already put the base uh, we will, we will do the much better in future uh, for this technology so uh, i i want to uh, stop here for this lecture uh, so we have discussed the basic of communication we will also continue in the next class uh, thank you uh, and uh, we will see the detail in the next class